Okay, so today I'm gonna show you guys how you can make colored gradient brushes in Procreate. This may sound kind of difficult and complicated, but it's really simple and really easy. Um, so to guide you through this process, I've made screenshots to kind of help you navigate through the process as I click through different steps and different phases of creating these brushes. First thing we wanna do is make our own new brush set. So you wanna to go to your brush library and you'll see this plus up top. We're gonna to click the plus. So what that does, it resets the whole brush catalog. So there's literally nothing in there. So you have to create your own brushes. So the first thing we'll do is click this plus on the top right. And now Procreate gives you a default brush you can work with. It will work perfectly for what we need to get done. And I highly recommend you just draw like a little sample scribble on the side. This will help you see how the brush is slowly changing once you make these adjustments. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our spacing and drop it down to 5%. Next, we're gonna to go to our stabilization on the left hand side. And we're gonna bump our streamline all the way up. See how I, it makes a difference when I start sliding the brush properties? So we're gonna bump that streamline all the way up. What that does is basically make your brush snap into place when you're drawing. Next, we're gonna to go to taper. For your, for your tapered line, you can leave that how it is. Um, what you wanna do here is we want to drop the pressure all the way down and bring the opacity all the way up. And then we wanna turn off the tip animation here. Next, we want to go to the taper, uh, touch taper, and we want to turn the opacity all the way up. Classic taper is off, tip and size are off. We then go to shape. You really don't have to deal anything with shape um, unless you want to change the roundness of your shape. I don't know if you can tell, but my brush is kind of um, going from a round to more of a chisel or flat tip. I prefer to keep it round. Um, I think it looks much better for what we're doing, so you don't have to necessarily change the shape. The grain is fine. You don't have to necessarily touch the grain. You want to go to rendering, and when we go to rendering, you want to change it to intense blending instead of intense glaze. Keep your max keep your flow at max your wet edge is at zero your burn edge is at zero these are all properties that give it this cool sketch look um, we're not really looking for that um, we're really just trying to get a create a model line brush like something that's pretty smooth simple and clean um, of course there's brushes already in there that show those properties but at the same time we want to get into the habit of creating our own brushes from scratch so once you start doing this you'll be able to freelance and make your own brushes when you want to then we want to go to wet mix. Um, so for the wet mix, you want to turn your charge to zero, your pull to zero, and your attack all the way up. Now, don't ask me what any of these things mean. Um, I just kind of was playing around and it happened to work best in my favor. So um, hopefully you trust the fact that I know what I'm doing at this point and um, just follow along with me. All right, then we want to go to our Apple Pencil. So if you're using an Apple Pencil, it has its own special properties um, within iPad, and of course, so um, I'm not too sure with other stylus, but I know for iPad, you'll have your own special properties that you want to adjust when you're creating your own brushes from time to time. So the only thing we want to do here is remove the pressure opacity. Um, and you'll slowly start to see, you may not know now because you're just looking at a a white zigzag line but behind the scenes your brush is slowly changing cool so all of the complicated nuanced stuff is out the way now where the real color changes start to take place is within your color dynamic properties so um, what we'll do here um, we'll slide if you go all the way to stroke color jitter um, you'll slide it all the, the hue all the way up and you want to slide the saturation all the way up as well. Um, now what that does, it just changes, it's using saturation is how, how the, the intense the color is. And we look at the hue, it's the spectrum of the, uh, the color spectrum in, in a sense. 
So when something is highly saturated, it's very, very vibrant. Um, when it's low, low saturation, um, you're more so dealing with grays, black and whites. So we wanna keep the stroke um, color jitter at max, um, the hue and the saturation at max. Now you can play with these settings. Like These are not written rules that you have to follow. Um, that's kind of how I learned. I just started playing with the settings, play with the adjustments and see what worked best for me. So I suggest you do the same thing for yourself. Okay, um, next we want to go to our color pressure sensitivity. Um, so we wanna to go to color pressure here. And now, once you start to see, um, once you start to slide your hue bar over, remember I said the hue basically is the colors of the color spectrum, um, you'll start to see your lines change colors. As you can see, I'm moving the hue color pressure, sen color pressure sensitivity um, from left to right. It's it's not as subtle as you may think as far as like the color change because I mean if you bump it all the way up you're literally going to get every color all in one stroke if you apply enough pressure but um, but um if you were to keep it at a moderate I guess a low percentage like 30 you'll get more of those colors within the same family so you'll get more of your cool colors like your blues, your purples, your oranges, um, you know, and sometimes you'll get your pinks, oranges, yellows, and reds all in one brush, which gives it this nice, seamless, smooth gradient. Um, I think that is really cool. But for the sake of the demo, to show you your opportunities and the, um, the allowances you have with this brush, I'm going to turn the hue saturation all the way up, the hue and the saturation all the way up, um, and I'm going to show you what I mean. So. If you want to kind of sample it yourself, we can get rid of this um, scribble and then we can just start to create our own brush. Now it all depends on, well, the color shift depends on how much pressure I'm putting down on the brush or on the screen, I'm sorry. So you can kind of tell um, when I push, when I apply heavy pressure, you'll see this purple. But once I kind of lighten up, you'll start to see orange and blue and pinks. And the colors are so arbitrary, like you'll, you won't really know what color you're gonna get right away. So sometimes you just have to go through the process. So I cleared, I cleared my palette off once again so you can kind of see um, what I've been doing. I cleared my palette off again to kind of give you a better demonstration because I know there was a lot going on. Um, so now let's kind of adjust the settings where we can feel like our brush is usable or um, ready to go, I would say. So I'm gonna bump that saturation down just a tad so it's not too high. And I'm gonna bump the hue uh, pressure probably down to, uh, let's say 75. Like I said, these are all random numbers based off what I think works best for me. So um, if you feel like these numbers are too high or too low, you're always welcome to you know, alter those colors, alter the settings to get the best results for you. So I got a hue of 75, saturation of 25, uh, stroke color jitter at max, saturation, uh, max hue at max. And this is what you kind of get. Um, sometimes, like I said, these colors are arbitrary. You really won't know what you'll get. And um, I think this has a nice pastel look. Um, you wanna get a different variety of strokes. Now, and one thing about this, when you're doing the demonstrations, um, it will cut your line for whatever reason. I don't know why. If anybody knows why that does, why that happens in Procreate, please let me know so I can make that adjustment. Sure. All right, cool. So if you wanna increase the size of your brush, I guess within the Procreate um, sample palette area, you can increase your preview brush and it gives you more of a thicker, broad um, brush. Yeah, and just, 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 I mean, and if you're interested in what the uh, stamp color jitter does, all it does is basically give these hard lines in between because they're essentially a bunch of circles <laughs> that are aligned together 
And I think what the stamp jitter, color jitter brush does, it just highlights the outer lines of those circles. Um, I mean, you can use this. I'm not saying this is not something you can use. I think this is a cool, uh, I don't know what to call this, but I think it's an interesting touch depending on what your project is and what you're working on. And you can actually see at the ends what co which color um, you're starting with. Like this is a lime green, this is a baby blue, and this is a magenta or hot pink, and that's a, a like more of a rosy pinkish color. But for the demonstration, we're gonna keep that at zero. Um, so yeah, so now that we've kind of figured everything out and if you have to go back to look at some of the screenshots that I put on the screen, um, you know, we can actually go into our brush settings or into our actual canvas and we can kind of try this out just so you can see the opportunities that this brush can provide to you. And if you don't like the stroke, you can simply undo it and just try again. Have fun with this this is this is very much so a free formed brush hopefully you can find your own projects to work with this um, I'm super excited to try some stuff myself um, I'm thinking about creating some like neon textures and um, finding ways to use this and demonstrate it in different ways but I'll show you one cool effect that I've always you know I, I love doing and I think this is something that I have this is the opportunity to kind of show you guys what how this can look so um, I'm just gonna make a you know cool little random scribble and luckily they gave me a nice color to start with um, just kind of do that and then what I'm gonna do is take this image that I created and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm gonna take the bottom one uh, bottom layer I'm gonna go to Gaussian blur and slowly slide it to the right. And I don't know if you can tell, but it kind of gave me this like neon glow stick effect. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's a little small demonstration that you can use um, or try out uh, just to get some cool glowy, um, some sort of glow effect. Uh, we can also go into our uh, blend, blend modes and see what we get there. You know, you can kind of see the subtle changes. Um, some blend modes work really well and then some just don't work at all. Um, like that one's that was pretty harsh, but it's still cool, has a great effect. Um, that's, I actually like that. It's more of like a drop shadow. Um, but no, I think these are all cool effects that we can play with. And that's the, that's the power of Procreate. You have the power to play with these colors, these strokes, these, you know, Next, I'm gonna duplicate the top one one more time. And then we're gonna just gonna add, we go to our little magic wand and we go to uh, color half tone. Um, let's see if this works. I'm gonna see if I can make a cool little half tone pattern. That looks really nice. I don't think you guys can see that, but I have a little half tone color thing. I'm gonna go all the way up so you can see. I have this cool little halftone colorway going. You can go to screen print, you can go to newspaper, it makes it black and white. Screen print, you have more like these overlapping bubbles. And then um, full color is the, basically this whole gambit of colors like layered on one thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, it seemed really difficult to do in the beginning, but I think once you start off, you know, just following the instructions that I've laid on the screen, and um, really paying attention to the behaviors of your brush. I think this will be a great opportunity for you guys to explore a new level of illustrating, um, design, and all aspects of the creative world. So feel free to like the video if you enjoyed it. Um, leave a comment below if you have any questions. I'm always willing to help. I'm always willing to have the conversations. I'm open to that. And um, subscribe to the channel because I'm starting to do more of these type of tutorials as I discover them. So I don't want you to miss out. I want you to be included. And um, so yeah, so I appreciate you guys for the support so far. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video.